crossing through the marulas. It's really quite nice. I'm just gonna go. How is that a gap for you? Do you need me to go back a little bit? Oh, perfect. Okay. There we go. So we first up. Well, you saw the kudu just a moment ago. Those ones weren't cooperating. They kept moving around and out of frame. We thought we were going to start on leaves. It was a, a reality for us. But it is a kudu cow, and she does have a youngster who is following behind her, and we'll catch up in just a moment. Now, they don't seem to be bothered by our presence at all, which is quite nice. They're almost, in fact, walking straight towards us. But I think it's because she wants to nibble on that little shrub and also stand in the shade because it is hot. So that's what the animals do. Just as you and I, well, I suppose we would stand in an air-conditioned room or if you're a guide, you'd make best friends with a chef and go and hide in the walk-in fridge, <laughs> in the freezer. That was always my favorite spot. But the animals, they don't have that luxury. They've got to use the shade created by all the trees. And then certain animals will, of course, also go and bathe themselves in nice cool water. Or if you're a buffalo, an elephant, you don't mind sort of wallowing around in the mud. But it's a little one. Probably only about a month, maybe two months old now. Oh, lovely. And this is actually quite cool because what's happening now, this is one's following mom, but mom's walking up onto the top of a termite mound. Off they go. So I wonder if she's going to go and stand right on top of the termite mound to scan the area. Well, it seems as though little one's going to go up before her. Come on, little one. Tell us what you see. You've obviously spotted us. Video Jumper, you've said that this is your favorite antelope. They are beautiful. I like all the antelope in the Tragalaphid family, so the family of antelope with spiraled horns. We saw a beautiful bushbuck ram just outside camp before we left and this afternoon too. They're frequent visitors along with the Inyala. We don't see too many kudu coming into camp. It's, it's just the pesky bushbuck and Inyala that come and eat my tomato and chili plants. They're very naughty. I now have none left. It's upsetting. I'm going to have to try again in spring. But big ears, good eyesight. So standing up on this termite mound would be a very good spot. And like we always say, coming into winter, the vegetation's thinning out, so they really are able to utilize these mounds quite well now. And they can see quite far off into the distance. And also there seems to be some tasty grass up there that they are enjoying. That little wire that you can see, that's just the aerial. I'm a bit reluctant to move. And the reason why I don't want to start the car is because I know that they're then going to just run down the mound. And it is such a beautiful sighting. But look at that. Look at Sebastian. How amazing, just very gracefully reached over to the back, grabbed the aerial and moved it out of his shot. So <laughs> here we go. That's probably why the little one got a bit of a fight. It was like, what are you trying to do? There's a couple of little shrubs also growing right on the top of that termite mound. So that mound doesn't look particularly active. Normally those mounds are quite bare, but termites will try and utilize all the vegetation that's right around their house rather than have to move too far away. So if it's covered in grass like this, I'm almost confident in saying that there's nothing happening in the top section. Perhaps down below, there could be some of those very intelligent insects living down there. But for now, it's working quite well for these kudu. They're having lunch with a view, I suppose. And this is as high as a vantage point that a kudu can get up in the northern sands. There unfortunately are not any copies, any rocky outcrops or anything like that up here. It's fairly flat, but we get some rather large termite mounds. This is not the biggest one. They can definitely get larger. Isn't that great though? I'm so sorry, Alice. Can I have that question again? I was too distracted. Ah, Now, Alexander, you're wondering how fast can Kudu run? Now, I'm not sure how fast they can actually go. They're, they're quite speedy when you see them racing away from wild dogs. That's when I've seen kudu run the fastest, is when they're actually um, trying to avoid <clears throat> being snatched up by a pack of wild dogs. So I'm going to I'm going to guess here. Let's see how close I am. Maybe somebody can help me. I'm just trying to think if my book, I've got a mammals book here. I don't know if it's going to have it in. I'm going to say, Sebastian, I'm going to, we're going to guess now and then we'll check for the correct answer. I think about 60 kilometers an hour. How fast do you think a kudu can get to? Um, we'll play a guessing game and then I'll check it up. Uh, 
40, between 40 and 50. You think between 40 and 50 kilometers an hour. So we'll see who's who's closest. And of course, this is a, a learning spot here. I'll check in my book. I do know, however, could you might not be the fastest antelope out there. They're not related to the tessabees. So even the red heart to be is quite quick. That's a cousin of the tessabee. And um, they can jump really high though, the kudu. So they are quite athletic. They can clear the game fences um, quite easily. They can jump up to about three meters from a standstill. So can you imagine that? There's no athlete out here without the use of a pole that could jump as high as a kudu. I think the pole vaulters would be impressed with the kudu. Right, and I'm trying to find antelope in this book. I've found them, but now there's every different species of antelope in Africa. So I've just got to find the right ones with the trachelaphids. No, that's springbuck. That's not the right family. This is a beautiful scene. Now it's not often that we get to sit with kudu. Woo, okay. Is, Izzy, you've said 70 kilometers. That's quite good. We'll, 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 we'll 100% check as well what my book says. It might vary slightly. This is very frustrating because I love this book. It's one of my favorite books. But to try and find anything in here, is a nightmare it really is not the easiest book to use and then you have to go oh my goodness Izzy we might just have to take your word for it and go with 70 kilometers an hour it's so I give up no. I'm not interested <laughs> no all the patience in the world <laughs> to sit with the leopard for an entire game drive that's just inching its way to try and get down a water burrow but no patience when it comes to looking through a book okay I'm gonna I'll have a look at the book now I just need a moment to compose myself so while I do that let's go back across to Ali and see how fast she thinks a kudu can run <laughs> Welcome to this wonderful afternoon out here in Safari. Let me just stop this vehicle. It takes a little while because we've got not, well, no brakes. My name is Ali and on camera with me today is Gert. And we are very happy to have you guys today. Now, as you know, it's a live and interactive show. So if you've got any questions or any comments, please feel free to send them using the hashtag the hashtag Safari Live. Now, my plan for the afternoon was to pretty much focus